Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship, when called upon to defend and liberate. They said yes. They found courage to rise with every sun, loyalty toward their country, discipline for every command, even in the darkest hours, they said yes. They cherished and fought for freedom, so those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written, they said yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. Good morning. We celebrate Memorial Day weekend. And this is a day where we traditionally stop, but because of COVID-19, we have been on pause for quite a few weeks. But as we stop and reflect, we remember those who have given their lives so that we would have our freedoms. Freedoms that sometimes we do take for granted. And let me tell you, this year is a little bit different for my wife and I. Uh, our son, Jake, he somewhere in the North Atlantic on a submarine. And we haven't spoken with him for over nine weeks and our hearts are with him and we're concerned. And, and I know that he's one of many who we worry about. And, but I know one thing, that there is a God who is watching over each and every one of us. There is a God that in the midst of loss, he comforts. So let us now turn to that God, the very one that we find in Scripture, Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Let us pray to that very one, the very one we're worshiping this morning. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you that on this day, a day in which we remember those who have given all so that we would have all, it reminds us of the very one who has given his very life. You are Lord and Savior. You are the one that we worship. You are the one that we come before. So may you receive our praises. We thank you, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song, because you are good. You're good. Oh, 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 let the king of my heart. Be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, 
the echo of my days oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song because you are good you're good oh you are good you're good You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good.
He died for me while I was sinning, needy and poor and blind. He whispered to assure me, I found thee, thou art. I've never heard a sweeter voice. It made my aching heart rejoice. Oh, the love that sought me. that brought me to the fold of God. Upon His grace I'll daily ponder and sing anew His praise. Father, what a privilege it is to be called a child of yours. As we come together this worship day, I pray that our hearts and minds are all about you. Lord, as we think even about this weekend, this Memorial Day weekend, we think about those who have sacrificed their lives for us, fought for our freedom and sacrificed so much from their families, their time here in the States, their personal activities, their fun things to do. They have given up so much. And yet, the Scriptures teach us about one who had given up so, so much so that we can live with Him forever. Father, help us to see that today. Help us to absorb that in our minds. We just sang a song about you being the king of our heart. And as beautiful as that song is, I think and I believe the scriptures teach us that every one of us falls short in that area. We want you to be the king of our hearts. We press towards that. But sin gets in the way. Our selfish desires, our wants, or what we think we do or do not need we get derailed we see things from magazines or in storefronts with our eyes 
We lust after them. And the truth is that none of us really want to sacrifice. We want what we want. We want it now. But not Jesus. The Scriptures teach us that for the joy that was set, the joy that was in His heart, He endured the cross. Oh, that joy that was set before Him. And Lord, I know that the joy was not in being beaten or hung on that tree, but His joy was doing Your will. That's what filled His stomach. That's what appeased His appetite. I pray, Lord, that we would follow in those footsteps, that we would do all that we can to seek after You, that Your desires would be our desires. Our spirit wants that, but our flesh is weak. So please, Holy Spirit, today, help us to seek after truth, eternal truth, what You teach us in Your Scriptures, faith in Christ obedience to Christ love for others yes that is the human sacrifice right there to love you with all of our hearts and to love others as ourself so easy to say and pray father but so hard to put into action so Holy Spirit we ask you for help help us to be more like Jesus we would reflect His goodness, His holiness. That when we're around others, they would want to know and see what's in our hearts. Help others to see the Christ that's inside of us. Help others to come to know about the true sacrifice that Jesus made. Giving up His life for sinners like me and the rest of the church. Help us to see the love in that cross. Thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to be your sons and daughters. May we worship you today. May we seek truth. May we love more and more the way Christ did. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you for welcoming us into your home for this Memorial Day weekend worship service. We pray that you will feel the presence of God as you worship with us from home. We want to share a special welcome with all of the local churches in our area who are worshiping with us today. It is an honor to be a part of your church's worship life as we persevere together through the COVID-19 crisis. And a special shout out to all of our friends and family at Stewart Air National Guard Base this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for the many ways that you continue to serve our country and community. Please know that we pray for you and think of you daily. Many of you have continued working through this pandemic because you have been identified as essential workers. Thank you for your daily sacrifice at the front lines, from hospitals to grocery stores, 
from late night trucking routes to early morning gas stations. Thank you for caring well for our community. Last week, we were thrilled to announce the launch of our new Goodwill Church app. This app is a one-stop destination to connect with all of your Goodwill Church content. At the Goodwill Church app, you can find Bible studies, the Goodwill Talk podcast, blog posts, and worship services. You can find the app by searching Goodwill Church Plus at your favorite app store. We are so grateful for the amazing way that many of our Goodwill Church family have served by giving to the Harmony Baptist Church Food Pantry. We are continuing to collect goods at the Lindsay Pullman Chapel this Friday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you for your amazing generosity. Next Sunday is a very important day in the life of the church, Pentecost. We are celebrating Pentecost this year with a special Goodwill Church interview featuring EPC missionaries Andrew and Noreen Brunson. Andrew was imprisoned by Turkish authorities for two years before being released only 18 months ago. On Sunday, May 31st at 7 p.m., be sure to spend the evening with the Brunsons on Facebook and YouTube. The generosity of our Goodwill Church family has been deeply encouraging and inspiring during this difficult season. Thank you for your faithful giving to the work of God through Goodwill Church. There are four ways to give. First, text Goodwill to 77977. Second, give with the Goodwill Church app. Third, visit goodwillchurch.org slash give. And fourth, you can mail your offering to 2135 State Route 208, Montgomery, New York, 12549. We want to thank you again for joining us this Sunday. Hope you have a great worship service, and we really look forward to the day that we'll all be able to meet again in person at our church. We love you. Have a blessed day. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Pray with me if you would. Father God, in Jesus' name, we give you thanks for these words. And this weekend and this day, we speak of sacrifice and love. These words are your words. For us as Christians, whenever we think of sacrifice and love, and you calling us friends. We think of who you are and what you've done for us, and, and, and we are blessed. We pray, Lord, that you would be blessed by the attention that we give you now on this Memorial Day Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for first loving us. We want and worship to show and to express that we love you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, today we remember those men and women who have died in service to our country. We pause to reflect on the lives sacrificed while protecting our freedoms. We confess that most days we are oblivious to the price paid by men and women in uniform and yet we live every day in the freedom they laid down their lives to give us. So today, we recall the words of Jesus when he said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And let us not forget that each life lost represents other lives that are left to pick up the pieces. We lift up widows and widowers, brothers and sisters, parents and children of the service men and women who fought valiantly for our country. 
We ask for your peace and comfort to never leave them. God, we thank you for the lives of these men and women. May their memory and their service never be forgotten. Amen. Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, The Pacific, We Were Soldiers, Black Hawk Down, Hacksaw Ridge. What do these movies have in common? They are all war movies. At least that's what many people would call them, war movies. But is that what they really are? Sure, each story from each of these so-called war movies portrays battle scenes and the violence of war. There are guns, bullets, bombs, and bodies. But war is not what makes these stories great. War does not make any story great. What makes these stories great is that people risked or gave their lives for others in the midst of war. According to our text today, these movies are not war stories. They are love stories. Tell the war movie fans in your life, probably all guys, that they are not fans of war movies, but actually fans of love movies. Tell the most hardcore of them that the love in Hallmark movies is nothing compared to the love in their war movies. You can make a documentary about war, maybe even an interesting one, but not a film. There is no great story In combat, there is no great story in death or destruction. The great story is in how soldiers and other people make sacrifices in the midst of combat and death and destruction. And why? These stories are the stories that matter most to the human race because they are stories of sacrifice, stories of love as Jesus defines it. These are the stories that are worth telling even when, maybe especially when, war is the backdrop. In the past few years as a military chaplain, I've, I've notified families and participated in funeral services for, for three young airmen just from our local guard base who died in combat. The step-by-step narrative of each of their combat deaths features each man making a split-second decision that put or moved himself into harm's way to protect others. And if they could, each one would tell you, I was just doing my job. We tend to call this heroic, but sacrifice is deeper than heroism. In the war on COVID-19 in America and all over the world, tens of thousands of medical professionals have been and are risking or losing their lives just doing their jobs, sometimes because they don't have personal protective equipment. People applaud medical workers as they head into work because of this. And even though some of them are now tired of the applause and the comparison of what they do to military service, still hundreds of doctors began to die months ago on the front lines of COVID-19. Many doctors and, and nurses and medical workers have died since then, not just in Italy and Iran, but here in the U.S. This last week, We lost Dr. James Charlie Mahoney. Here's a few quotes from an online story last Wednesday about him. Dr. James Charlie Mahoney, a physician in Brooklyn for over 30 years, is another frontline casualty in the global fight against the coronavirus pandemic. But to those who knew him, he lived every day serving others and fought the virus with his endless positive spirit until he physically couldn't. Mahoney, who was 62, could have taken a back seat during the pandemic, given his age and health. But his family and colleagues say he wouldn't even consider it. You can definitely call this doctor a hero, just like you can definitely call our struggle with the pandemic a war. But there is more to his story and his sacrifice than heroism in our war against the virus. And the word for this more is love. Our faith as Christians helps us see this because our Lord as Christians made sure that sacrifice and love like this was the point and centerpiece of everything he did and taught. 
Christ's sacrifice on the cross was and is the ultimate expression of the love of God. Not just a victory in the war against sin. Jesus taught us plainly and clearly that living for him in obedience was about love. John chapter 15. Let's look at 12 and 13. Verses 12 and 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. Jesus dying for us saves our souls and touches our hearts. But the verses here go further. Love always goes further. Jesus did not die for strangers. He died for friends. Those are his words. If you are a believer, then you can be assured that before you were born, he died for you because he called you and called you to be his friend. What does it mean to be a friend of Jesus Christ? Let's look at verse 14 of John 15. You are my friends if you do what I command you. And verse 15. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Relationship is God's priority for us. He wants us back in relationship with him and each other. And Jesus alone provides us with a way through him to have a, fa- to have a relationship with His father, to have a father in heaven. And and sin, well, that's the thing that breaks us and our relationships and our world apart. Sin is the parent of death, whether that death comes from combat or the coronavirus or anything else. Love lays down one's life for another. It defies death. In Christ, it defeats death. When we know this, when we know what love really is, when we know that it is about sacrifice, then we can begin to know more about God and and know more about what our, our master is doing and wants to do and wants to see us doing. Love is the only way to approach knowing the mind of God. Love is the greatest of all. Love is what God is looking for from us Not performance or behavior, not eye service or an abundance of words. Love, love is sacrifice. Love is the fruit you can look for in your own life if you want to examine your root. Is there love there? Then the root is good. So who are you? That's a great question. I think many of us are asking that question through this crisis, through this time of quarantine. Who are you? Well, let me ask it another way. Let me ask that question the way Jesus might ask it. Who are you? Here's what he would ask. Who or what do you love? And what are you willing to do about it? Now that answers the question, who are you? Next week, we introduce our our summer sermon series and our, our summer approach to being Goodwill Church, to being Goodwill Strong. As we transition one step at a time, patiently out of quarantine. The series will be called Rebuild. It'll be a study of the book of Nehemiah and of what God wants us to do now, how he wants us to rebuild in our lives. Now, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, and I know many people are wondering, well, when is the church going to open And we're excited about some of the things we're going to do between now and our official phase one opening. We're just wanting to reach out to you, to be with you safely, even for a little bit. But we know that this summer is about more than just getting back what we had. Because in many cases, what we had, well, we were wanting to get better than that. We wanted to have better than that. And so uh, the quarantine hits us at a unique time, many of us in our lives. Now it'll be next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, when 
you'll, and you'll hear about it now, because I'm telling you about it now, you're going to, and you, and you heard it in the announcements too, that we're, we're going to broadcast an interview that Marcos and I did with Andrew and Noreen Brunson. You remember Andrew Brunson? We prayed for him. He was in a Turkish prince, prison for, for two years. And we, we had uh, little wristbands, and, and we had slides on the screen. And Andrew Brunson was an EPC pastor and missionary. He still is. And so we, we took it personally. But the whole world did as well. And he really is. I'm, this is I, I think I can defend this claim. I think he's the most prayed for man in the history of the world. Because people in every country, everywhere, Christians everywhere, decided that they knew how to pray and prayed for him. And there's something about this that is remarkable and unique. And that we here at Goodwill Church have access to him and can ask him about his story written in his book, God's Hostage. And, and can pray with him and have him pray over us. That's all part of this interview coming up. And what we're going to do in the next few months is focus on what God is doing in us. How is he rebuilding us? And, you know, we, we look at our lives and we realize so much has changed. Permanently. There's no going back to before the pandemic. And whatever has lasted, whatever remains, well, it's stronger than a pandemic. And it gives us an opportunity, a great opportunity. Forget about trying to make normal new. We don't want normal. God is doing a new thing. And this is good news. It really is. And for many of us, it's going to involve hard work. It's going to be an interesting summer. It's time to rebuild. So what's our model for this? What's our mission? How do we do it? Well, these verses spell it out for us. L-O-V-E, love. Look at John 15, verses 16 through 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Love one another. It's the one another part we're missing these days. We feel a lack of during this time of quarantine. What a strange Memorial Day. Parades everywhere canceled. But the meaning of Memorial Day, that can't be canceled. The meaning of these parades remains. We are grateful for the love of others that rose to the level of sacrifice, especially in our military and this year in our medical professions as well. We have what we have because others gave up everything they had. And of course, the ultimate expression of this is Jesus who gave his life, not for those he called strangers, but for those he called friends. This is why, for American Christians, Memorial Day is something we don't hesitate to talk about or refer to in worship because it's about sacrifice, and sacrifice is proof of love. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends, John 15, 13. Memorial Day used to be called Decoration Day because it involved the decoration of the graves of soldiers who died in combat or military conflict. This year, even the placement of little flags at soldiers' graves by the Boy Scouts, well, that got canceled. And yet when I walk around, I notice in cemeteries that there are new little flags here and there. Maybe not as many, but somebody has taken the time and, and put little flags by some of these graves. This is true to the meaning of Memorial Day. For many of us, for many years, it's only been about, you know, the, the first weekend of summer. Now you can wear white pants. I don't know why I know that fashion rule. It's the only one I know. But you can start wearing white pants now, and you've got to stop by Labor Day. That's the rule. For many of us, it's about a picnic. It's about a sail somewhere. 
Something's on sale, some blowout sale, Memorial Day sale. But Memorial Day isn't about any of those things. It's not about the living at all. It is about those who provided us the means to live and to live free. I saw a meme the other day online. It read, your parents were called to war. You're being called to sit on the couch. You can do this. For many of us, the hardest part of the coronavirus pandemic and quarantine is that there is nothing hard about it at all. There's a special kind of reverse sacrifice involved in not having to sacrifice anything at all. The world acts, asks and expects nothing from you, perhaps, except that you would do your best to keep yourself comfortable and safe. And there's something weird about that. It's hard to appreciate life when there's nothing hard about your life. It's hard to feel alive when there's nothing or no one that you would readily die for. So if you've never sacrificed anything or even had a mind to do that, then maybe the meaning of Memorial Day might be hard to appreciate. We can appreciate that. And if this describes you, know that it's, it's still a blessing to show respect and to show honor. And, you know, if the military and, and war itself are, are offensive to you, well, that's, that's okay. That's, that's what you believe. But you could still be grateful that you don't have to serve. You can be grateful that you don't have to fight. You can be grateful that you can make that choice and live it out. And even if you think this period of quarantine is government overreach, I've heard a lot about that or that the pandemic itself is fake, or at least overblown news. But you can still honor the memory of all those in the medical profession who have, along with nearly 100,000 Americans, and another quarter of a million people worldwide, lost their lives to COVID-19. Altogether, that's 350,000 people or so that were around last Christmas and on New Year's Day, and they're not around anymore. Like you, I've seen different reports on on death rates and what they mean, but regardless, we know that the death rate is 100% for each one of these people and for their loved ones and friends and families. Never forget that. Never forget when you hear about a doctor dying, you're hearing about a whole family and a whole community. And in this doctor's case, a whole huge network of hospitals. He's a well-known, beloved Dr. Dr. Mullen. So over the years, we've ended the Memorial Day Sunday sermon or maybe the service itself with a, a rendition of taps. And so uh, I have a video of that. It's about 70 seconds long. And so let's take a moment now and, and listen and honor. Some of you may want to stand. Lord, we come before you now in awe and with trembling. It's something to hear that trumpet, to hear those notes. And and for some of us, it it brings back a distinct memory. We know exactly what that song is about, what it means. And for others of us, we, we may not have as close a connection to it. But you've commanded us all to love one another as you have loved us. We see that. 
And Lord, we want to confess that we have disobeyed you. The news of war and the presence of armies shows how far we are as a world from living as you have commanded us to. Forgive us and restore us. Show us how, in the midst of our failure and conflicts, show us how we can follow your lead, how we can show greater love. We can lay down our lives, maybe in a big way all at once, like so many in the military and this year in the medical profession, or for the majority of us in a small way, in smaller ways, by, by giving up our rights each day to have things our way. We are humbled by sacrifice itself and especially by your sacrifice, Christ. And then we're, we're humbled some more because you call us friends. Help us to live up to this. Help us, help us to be recognizable as your friends. And, and live for you by doing what you command. It would be more than good enough to be called your servants. But you say no, you call us friends. You make known your, 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 your father to us. You, you chose us to, to go and bear fruit, the fruit of love. So this is what we ask. Help us to love you by loving one another and making whatever sacrifices we can in the name of love. And help us to support those who have made the sacrifice or have loved ones who have made the sacrifice, whatever sacrifice they have made. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Again, it's Memorial Day Sunday, 2020, a different Memorial Day than any of us ever could have predicted. And I am joined by Pastor Jose Rodriguez and Pastor Ken Fanning. And I asked them specifically to join me on this weekend because they are both fathers of sons in the military, mm -hmm. yeah. one in the Navy and one in the Army. Yeah. So we have the, the Navy, Air Force, and Army all covered Amen. here. That's right. right. And our worship leader today, uh, Sam Davies, is an honorably discharged uh, staff sergeant from the United States Air Force who saw combat and has mm -hmm. a Purple Heart and a Combat Action Medal. Wow. And so we are an all-military related connected crew today on Memorial yeah. Day Sunday. Amen. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we're going to highlight is uh, the flag that's in front of our, our sanctuary it was given to us on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Mm. And it was presented to us by the American Legion across the street, and we've placed it at the level of the chairs so that people can come up and look at it. It's on, still on the uh, correct side of the, the building, but you can come up and look at the plaque there and just see. That's a very special thing. Right. And so uh, we're, we're happy about that, that being there. That's a nice story, nice connection to our community. So when we talk about the military, it means something different for both of you than maybe it did even yeah. two years ago or three years ago. I know Absolutely. probably both of your sons were interested. Right. Yours was always interested. Right. I think yours was too. I remember him starting right. to do push-ups and He did. Yeah. He yeah. did, Pastor John. Yep, he did. And uh, yeah, he did. He's he's in the army now and so, somewhere in Europe. Germany. Germany. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Grafen War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and he's there uh, observing social distancing and all the rest. They are. We all have to do that in the yep. military, like everywhere else. Like everywhere else. Yep. They're not happy about it, but they no, know it's... like no one else. Like everyone no one else. else is unhappy about it, too. Yeah. But it's uh, rules yeah. and regulations, yep. and rules they're abiding. Rules, yep. Especially in the military. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so, you, and your son is in a submarine somewhere. Yeah. Well, he's been there for nine weeks. Well, the story is, right, he went to the recruiters to um, see the Air Force guy. Oh, what and, happened? And the guy was not there. And the oh, Navy guy just typical. snuck in. The Air Force right? guy and, wasn't there. Yeah. Oh. And, and all of a sudden, um, he just said, hey, why don't you take this practice ASVAB? Oh, and, that's how they get you. And all of a sudden, it's, he got hooked. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. and, yeah. But it, he is on the USS Indiana, uh, which got commissioned September 29, 2018. Wow. It's a brand new uh, fast attack um, sub and you know on that submarine well they call it a boat yeah. right they don't even call it a submarine right they call it the boat right there's 135 sailors on there and you know pretty much they have been quarantined for the last nine months or nine weeks sure. underwater wow. um, and we haven't heard a word from him and it's 
pretty hard because his yeah. birthday is coming up. Yeah. You know, May 30th, he'll mm -hmm. be 24 years old. So um, it's really difficult in how to celebrate and remember and just pray for him that, um, you know, that he will come home, right? Because there's always the potential of something right. happening, you know. Um, uh, and Jake is married, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's really him and his wife. So we're really trying to um, do something to just connect with her, especially right. during this time, because it's yeah, just yeah. hard on everybody. Yeah. And those are the kind of factors that uh, most people won't consider, right. won't think about. But a day like this, right. you know, it resonates with you and, you, and you think about what it means. Right. And, uh, you know, there's families everywhere who have people in the military, and some have lost people in the military. And now, this year, there are families everywhere with people in the medical services. Right. And some have lost loved ones in the medical services. Right. Amen. So, your son is in the Army? Army, serving, like I said, in Graffin War. And uh, Junior went in uh, last August. And uh, that was tough for us, you know, uh, just coming out of high school. And, uh, you know, John, when he said that um, he was thinking about joining the military uh, during like 11th grade, uh, I just, you know, give him a bump. Like, yeah, all right, good, good for you. Thinking that, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, I never, we just didn't think it was going to happen. We really didn't. And, uh, and then he graduated. Uh, and right as, as he was finishing up high school, he said, um, I'm, I'm going to go sign papers. You know, and uh, and he let us know. I mean, he wanted our blessing, and uh, and that was tough because we knew that that, that he was going to be away from us. But you know, we really believe Renee and I believe that if this is God's will for him to be there, then who are we to even stop God's plan? And uh, so we prayed for him, and that's what we did. And yeah. we would encourage him. And and when he left, it was it was heartbreaking for us. Because I couldn't, I mean, I would wrestle with my son and we beat each other up. And I mean, we just, we've set up the mats inside our, our room and our wrestling mats. And, and we go out a couple times a week and I miss that, uh -huh. you know, yeah. that's my boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and then with him not talking to him for the first, you know, a uh, couple of months when he was at basic, I mean, that was like crushing us. Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, I thank him and everyone else. And then you really begin, you know, you hear about people sacrificing. You hear about other families talking about the sacrifice that they've made and their loved ones gone and the sacrifices that may, they made, but you really don't, you know, you can't appreciate it until you're really in no, the midst yeah. of it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we do, and we're grateful to sure. not only my son, but to all. And really, I, I thank God. I, we're able to talk to our son every day, but I always mention this when I'm with Jose. I mean, Jose's son, uh, Jose and Kim's son is in a, in a, a submarine, right. you know, and not... I mean, no contact. Right. I mean, we're able, a boat, right? right. A boat. We're, a boat. A boat. <laughs> we're able to talk to Junior, and he usually, you know, um, uh, gives us a call every night, yeah. a quick 30 second phone call, says goodnight, love us, but, but uh, really thinking about Jake yeah. and, and the sacrifice that he's making right. away from his wife, Jamie, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So um, I thank him too, as well. And all well, of well, thank you, two dads, yeah. for raising sons. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Uh, there's a sacrifice, there's a price you're right. paying, and they're making choices that are very different than many, many people uh, right. of any generation, but maybe their generation especially, because uh, a lot of people would say, well, that's not, that's not for me. I right. don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put myself in harm's way. And yet they've both right. chosen otherwise. Right. And you know, it's uh, in light of Memorial Day, right? It's like it's our sons, you, Sam Davies, right? It's like you are... Uh, enter into a specific group of individuals, right? right? And, and here's the thought that I had, right? It's like that somewhere in our lives, their lives, your life, um, there's going to be a flag presented. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, you're and, right. And, and those words are going to be, right, on behalf of the president of the United States. And right. you know what? That's always been touching because you know that TAPS is going to follow right behind right. it, right? So right. it's just... And, yeah, uh, it, it's almost, you know, it, it's that one more piece to honor and remember, you know, and, and all of a sudden it's like that's the piece that was um, most pressing, you know, as I was coming to this day, yeah, yeah. today. Amen. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. I forgot yeah. all about that. Yeah. yeah. You put it that way, it almost makes me want to cry right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, oftentimes, it, and when any service like that, uh, we, we do bring up this verse. Right. So I've had the opportunity to use this verse so many times right. in the military. Uh, John 15, 13, and it is a powerful verse, mm -hmm. you know, and the verses around it, you know, you were pointing out earlier, it's, it's all about love. Right. Mm. And that's, uh, that, that really is what it's all about. So but he's not asking, he's commanding. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. He's not saying, hey, if you could do this, do this. No, he's saying, I command you. Right? It, it, it's a command to love. It's not, it's not an option. No. Right? It's not something that we have a choice over. It's not right? a sales pitch. No, you absolutely not. Oh, this will be good. You'll like this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And, and in the midst of it, it's going to cost you. Right? There, there's something that, that you're going to have to sacrifice and give. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey me. Uh -huh. huh. It doesn't get clearer than that, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. Yeah, it's the most convicting yeah. verse in the it Bible. Like I, yeah. I'm commanded to love others. Jesus says, first, you love me. Yeah. If you love me, you will obey me. And by obeying me is adhering to the command when I tell you to love others. Right. A lot easier said than done. Yeah. But, and he doubles up on it by saying, well, I'm, I'm asking you this not right. because you're my servants, Amen. but because I'm, I'm going to give you a new designation now. Right. You're my friends. Amen. Amen. And that's just, yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. Well, it's, it's the same thing that what reminds me with Jake and probably Kenny. You know, it's like it's, they went into the military not fully, fully understanding the commitment. Right. I agree. Right? And, and all of a sudden, it's like now they get it. Right? And it's the same thing when we say yes to Jesus. We say yes, really mm -hmm. not understanding the full commitment. Right. Right? I think God does that on purpose. He, that. <laughs> he, does. Yeah. he does. He does. Oh, he does. Because if I knew what I knew now, the day I said yes to Jesus, I would have been like, no, nah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't well, know. He says, I, you know, you didn't choose me. I chose, chose you. you. Amen. So I, I'm in charge of this whole thing. Yes, he is. Amen. Thank God for that. Because yeah. naturally, I would never want him on my own. Mm -hmm. I would not. Yeah. And yeah. I thank him so much that he instilled inside me faith and an obedience to him by the power of the Spirit. Yeah. Left to myself, I am a wretched man. Right. And he enables us to bear fruit. Amen. So with all that in mind, Jose, pray us into that, that last worship song. Sure. Amen. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. Thank you that we find these words in the Gospel of John and that you do command us to love and, and that if we love, we're no longer strangers, servants. We are a friend of yours. And, and Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the life you lived, for the life you grant us who put our trust and faith in you, but ultimately for the very thing you secure, eternity. Amen. And Lord, as we come to the end of our time today, let us always remember that you are our Lord and Savior. You are our God. Lord, would you take my life and may you let it be. Mm. We ask all of this in the name that's above all names, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Or oh, take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I
eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? What can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? So I'll walk upon salvation. Your spirit alive in me, my life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So what could I say, and what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So what could I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, Surrendered all I am is yours. 